Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. We finally have some footage of Daredevil and the Punisher teaming up again. See around Red, he finally saw him again. They're teaming up against a bunch of corrupt cops who are all wearing the Punisher logo on their uniforms, confirming a bunch of plot details. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, I'll be doing videos for all the episodes when it does premiere next year. If it wasn't clear, this is for Daredevil Born Again, so be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. This is the next big push of all the Marvel Netflix Defenders characters coming back. Punisher just happened to be like the next big one after Daredevil, Kingpin, in a version of Iron Fist that'll debut during a different Black Panther TV show later this year. Not the Finn Jones Iron Fist, but a different one from much earlier in the timeline. I just did a new Iron Fist video about Luke Cage, Iron Fist coming back, and I just did a Punisher video too because it was other separate footage of Punisher on set filming scenes. Turns out the reason they were filming scenes is because they were getting ready to film this even bigger scene of him and Daredevil teaming up again, both in their suits, like he's wearing his full Punisher logo. The suit is the exact same one that he wore on the Punisher series. I'll do it with you. And based on the footage, it just looks like them in the middle of a street fight with Kingpin's corrupt cops that are trying to take them down, or at least arrest them. Probably try to kill them, but mostly arrest them. It's not totally clear what Karen Page is doing here with Punisher and Daredevil, but I know a lot of people have been wanting to have a reunion between Karen and Frank, so they're finally doing it on the show. It seems like it might be part of this larger scene of them fighting in the street with Kingpin's corrupt cops. Both of them are in costume here, so maybe they're just caught in an ambush or this is part of some larger plan that Karen Page is part of. There's a little footage of some of these corrupt cops specifically. Not all of them, I think, are meant to be corrupt. Some of them are just meant to be working for Kingpin as part of this anti-vigilante task force. Like, look at the badges on their uniforms. It's a special task force that he creates, and it seems like it's after he becomes mayor, like after he's empowered with the office of mayor. Essentially, he uses it as an excuse to go after all the heroes in New York City, calling them dangerous vigilantes and painting them as if they're the villains they are causing more trouble than they're worth and they need to get rid of them. Basically, things that he did during Daredevil Season 1, Season 2, Season 3, he's been doing this for a while. You go back and you watch those very early Daredevil episodes, like way back in season one. He was literally trying to play this same card, going out in public, making himself seem like a hero. He's going to clean everything up. Daredevil is the real villain here. The suit that Daredevil is wearing is the same one he was wearing in the other footage that we saw. I did a completely separate video about that, so I'll link it down in the description below. It's meant to be a new version inspired by the old one. Like, it's a little bit different, but it does look somewhat similar. Most people are noticing that it doesn't have the Daredevil symbol on the chest, but it does look kind of janky. Like, if you tune up the brightness a bunch, it looks kind of janky, so they might add the DD in special effects later. Like, they might just use visual effects to put it on there. There's some separate footage of Punisher going after the corrupt cops specifically. Like, one of the cops here is Cole North from the comics. He's a character who debuted relatively recently during the Mayor Kingpin storyline. Like, that just happened a couple years ago. They're basically adapting that storyline, like the Muse storyline, for season one. During that run, he's tasked with capturing Daredevil, which he eventually does. He's anti-vigilante, but he's not totally evil or anything like that. He's just forced to work for Mayor Kingpin as part of this task force. Eventually, Mayor Kingpin asks him to go after Spider-Man and arrest him because of his larger anti-vigilante campaign that he goes on. That's why you've been seeing Daredevil in those hats that say, Can Fisk Fix It? Like, that's part of the slogan he's using. It's basically his version of Make New York City Great Again. Some of the footage seems like it takes place later in the timeline, like some is before he becomes mayor and some is after he becomes mayor. Like there's a newspaper that we saw on set from the first episode that has articles about him cleaning up the city, making it seem like he's either just become mayor or he's about to become mayor, like he's still in the middle of running for. That was what the whole ending of the Echo series was meant to set up. Like it was meant to be a post credit scene teasing the beginning of Daredevil Born Again because it'll be a bit of a time jump when Daredevil Born Again picks up. Maybe a couple flashbacks in episode one to explain what happened to the character since the last time you saw them because like Foggy Nelson, Karen Page, we haven't seen them in a long time. But honestly, I think what most people were waiting for to see from Daredevil Born Again was seeing actual Punisher come back. Like, we knew that John Bernthal would come back as Punisher. Kevin Feige said that he was never planning on recasting him. See you around, Red. And even in the earlier version of the show that they wound up canceling, like they basically canceled the show and then soft rebooted it, hired the executive producer and some of the creatives from the Punisher Netflix series, the original Daredevil Netflix series, like a bunch of the Netflix crew hired on to make the new show. They made a new version. They reshot the pilot. They're shooting a bunch of new episodes right now. That's why we're getting all this footage. Basically all the Netflix people coming back to make the new episodes, which I think is the smart way to go for Kevin Feige. 
So you have most of the creative team behind the Punisher Netflix doing all this new Punisher storyline during this series. It definitely bodes well. I have no idea what was so bad about the first version of the show, but apparently the way they were writing it, Foggy Nelson and Karen Page were meant to have died before the events of the series. Daredevil wouldn't have put on his actual Daredevil suit until like episode four. Most of the show would have felt a little bit more like a slightly less humorous version of She-Hulk, more of a legal procedural type of show. Just things that people would not have wanted from an actual Daredevil show. Like there are certain things that you want from Daredevil Punisher when you hear those characters are going to show up. So the new version of the show, like the episodes that we're actually going to get next year, will feel much more in the tone of the original series, according to Charlie Cox, Kevin Feige, like all the creatives that are making this new version of the show. Right now, the plan is to slowly fold in all the other Netflix Defenders characters, but not all at the same time, obviously. Punisher just happened to be the first one because he has this huge arc during the season. There was a point earlier in the development of the series when Jessica Jones was going to be a much bigger part of the plot. Kristen Ritter was going to come back as her character. She started teasing that too, but then they had that soft reboot where they made the new version of the show. I don't know if she's going to be in this new version, like if she'll have some kind of cameo scene or there'll be some kind of teaser at the end of season one. The scarf looked better. Nice ears. They're horns. But the other really good news, when all this footage was dropping, they confirmed that there is going to be a season two. I think we knew that there was going to be one and they had talked about it earlier, but until they start talking about it, sometimes you just don't know. What I think they did though for season two is originally the show was meant to be 18 episodes for season one. They were going to have a break in the middle, so like nine and nine. So it's like one big story that's just broken in half and they're calling the second half season two now and they will air it in the year after season one. So we're talking 2026. Personally, I'm totally fine with that. One of the big problems with a lot of the Disney Plus series that Marvel's been doing, even Star Wars has run into this problem too, is getting seasons out in a timely manner. Like multiple seasons of shows, like it's great to have a mini series every once in a while, but there needs to be a certain level of continuity. Like you can't be jumping around too much. That's where you get a lot of audience confusion. You wind up with a lot of characters that people just don't care about. And that's one of the reasons why Disney just in general has had problems with Disney Plus. Like Marvel fans, Star Wars fans, all the big stuff they've been doing the past couple of years has been diluted by them just trying this shotgun method just shooting everything at the wall to see what sticks every once in a while they'll have a huge hit like loki for instance and they will do a season two but it'll take them years to get it out because they didn't go into season one knowing that they would do season two Kevin Feige also revealed part of the big changes behind Daredevil Born Again is just happening at Marvel TV in general. The person who's in charge of a lot of Marvel TV as well was talking about this when he was talking about canonizing all the Marvel Netflix Defender stuff to the MCU. He said there was a larger creative overhaul with the way they just make TV shows in general and now they're planning more on multi-season arcs, more like traditional TV shows work. Instead of trying to develop a bunch of different miniseries and just green lighting stuff ahead of time, giving anybody and their sister who was in the comics even for a second their entire series when they probably don't need one. Now they're developing a bunch of different things and just going with the strongest stuff, green lighting that after it makes it through their ringer. One of the other big problems they had during the pandemic is that they had this edict from upon high, like way beyond Kevin Feige, his bosses, telling them to put out as many series as possible, which just leads to all kinds of quality control problems. Secret Invasion is the series that we all point to, like what was up with that series? Why was the story all over the place? It seemed like a complete mess. Mostly because they were trying to release way too much stuff way too fast. That's why they've delayed so much stuff this year, particularly with the movies too. Like they've been having this problem on the movie side too. That's why Deadpool and Wolverine is the only big Marvel movie that's coming out this year because it was so far along in production, they could finish it. And now because it's the only movie coming out this year, they can focus way more attention on polishing it before it comes out. I'm the Messiah. I am. They also really, really desperately need a giant hit. And it does seem like it's going to do really well. Like I am super hyped for it. But a lot of the positive changes they're making behind the scenes, particularly with Daredevil Born Again, like making a better version of the show, like the best version of the show, we won't really start seeing until next year, the year after that. Like it'll take a while for a lot of the efforts of their labor to bear fruit. But because they've been filming this new version of Daredevil Born Again for so long this year, we've gotten a bunch of footage from the set. I just did the video about the fake looking Punisher who seems like he is one of these corrupt cops wearing Punisher's logo. Like why would Punisher cover up his face when you see him here in the middle of the street fight and his face is not covered up. So this corrupt cop goes after White Tiger who's another vigilante that's on Kingpin's hit list so to speak. 
we got a little footage of him in the broad light of day in a completely different episode, looking like he's acting like a vigilante in this store here. Maybe he's trying to stop someone from robbing this place. I believe in the original version of the show too, like the very first version, they were going to do the storyline from the comics called The Trial of the White Tiger and Daredevil was going to have to defend him in court. Now I don't know if they just completely canceled that because apparently with the creative overhaul with the show just in general, they got rid of a lot of the stuff that they did before. So that may have just reduced White Tiger's storyline, but I think we're going to see another version of White Tiger take the mantle like his daughter or his son or something like that eventually after the events of this season. The other really big character is Muse from the more recent comics too. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up though, so if you spotted any other easter eggs or references in this new Punisher and Daredevil teaser, let me know in the comments. They'll be filming for a while, so whatever new footage we do wind up seeing, of course I'll do videos for it. Hopefully, if we're really lucky, maybe we'll see some Jessica Jones teasers or like some other Defenders teasers in there too. I'm not expecting a ton of them though. We're in the middle of X-Men episodes. I just posted my new episode 4 video. I'll put a link for that down in the description. We also have the Invincible Season 2 finale. That'll be my next big video. So be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss anything. Everybody click here to learn about Luke Cage and Iron Fist coming back. And click here for that brand new X-Men episode. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.